All right, how are we after the bonfire and the color tour? How are we feeling? Feeling good? Okay, cool. So I get to um, add some food to the perspective here at the end. Uh, so now that you guys have had some wine in you, you've got some, uh, the, the bonfire out there, now we get to enjoy some charcuterie. And I'm gonna show you guys how to put a board together. Uh, like Tom mentioned, my wife and I started the grazing table um, actually just about a year ago. Uh, we celebrated um, our one year anniversary last week. We are located in downtown Kalamazoo. Uh, we make hundreds of charcuterie boards a week. Um, to say that I have a fun job is an understatement. Um, it really is a fun thing that we get to do. We have a whole team, we have 10 employees that all make charcuterie boards each and every day. And they actually made one for you guys today to enjoy after the presentation. So you guys have some charcuterie to enjoy as well. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys some hands-on practical tips and how to build a charcuterie board. Who here knows what a charcuterie board is? Okay, who here has never heard of a charcuterie board? And that's okay, you can raise your hand. Okay, it's a safe space, okay? Um, practically, what a charcuterie board is, it's a fancy word for a meat and cheese board. We've all grown up with them on the, around the holidays especially, you always have a meat and cheese board, at least I did. Um, now what charcuterie boards are turning out to be is a beautifully arranged platter of meat and cheese. Uh, what used to be a charcuterie board was um, very high-end cheeses with meats, um, very delicately placed, maybe a splash of mustard here, gourmet jam here. You still might be able to get that at a restaurant. We call that restaurant charcuterie uh, with what we do. Um, but now you have beautifully arranged platters of things. You'll see things like um, sweets and treats charcuterie. Maybe it's donuts and candies and chocolates. Uh, I, we just recently did a french fry and chicken finger board. Um, truly, the world is the limit as long as it's beautifully arranged and um, people like to say it's social media approved. So um, ultimately we all wanna see that like, right? So we wanna make a beautifully arranged platter, post it on social media and, and let everyone fall in love with it like we have. So I'm gonna show you guys some tips and tricks uh, as the holidays roll around and how to build a charcuterie board. But the first thing I wanna note, uh, if you've ever went to attempt one of these before, is that I wanna remove any fear and or um, any thought process along doing it wrong. You cannot build a wrong board. We, there are no rules, there's no standards, there's nothing that you truly have to follow. If you like it, you like what's on it, you wanna enjoy it, that is all that matters. But my goal to do today is to show you guys just some ways to maybe improve it or add some, um, some stylistic uh, touches to it, but ultimately it's your creation at the end of the day and it's meant for you to enjoy and for your guests to enjoy. Uh, so we have these um, and I have some to pass out to you guys as well. Uh, we keep these in our shop and we just, we're gonna follow some guidelines today. Again, they're not rules. They're gonna be guidelines for us to just make sure we're taking note of things as we're building to ensure that by the time we're done, the board is balanced and it has all the things that we want on the board. Most of us, if we've ever had a meat and cheese board, it's gonna be on a tray of some sort. Um, so Fireside Financial is really nice. They made us this custom board for this presentation, which was really cool, has our logo on it. Um, so I'm gonna frame this or put this up in the shop, so thank you guys for that. Um, but uh, most of uh, charcuterie boards are gonna be on a wood platter but you're gonna see other things out there. Maybe they're slate boards, maybe they're marble slabs, different options like that. Uh, the one thing I like to notice first is if there's an edge. Notice here there's no edge on this board. That's okay, it's just gonna help us build the board in a different way. On this side, however, there is gonna be that drip tray there and we can use that edge if we wanted to and I'll explain that a little bit later, but we're gonna use this side because we love that GT logo on there. All right. So when we're building, we want to take note of a couple different things. One, we want to build largest to smallest. Uh, in other words, my team and I like to describe that as most important to least important. If you like food like me, everything on this board is going to be important, but it needs to have at least meat and cheese on it to be a meat and cheese board, right? Uh, so we, have, we want to start with most important to least important. But we also want to start largest to smallest. And the reason we do that is because when you're building your board, what you don't want to do is at the very end, have a large item or something that's important, let's say it's one of the meat items, and you have no room for it. There's nothing like trying to squeeze something in a board and just try to make it fit, right? You don't want to have to do that. So we want to start with all those large items first, get them in their, in their place, uh, in their spot, and then we can build around them with the smaller items. We always end with things like blueberries, almonds, uh, chocolate covered almonds, things like that, that to fill any of those crevices. Uh, and that way we can go ahead and fill every bit of the board 
Um, and with that mindset, our goal is to cram this board with as much food as possible. The reason being is when guests arrive to your home, uh, it's gonna show them that you've gone above and beyond to give them as much food as possible on this board. It speaks intentionality to them without you even saying anything. They just arrive, they see a full board that you have now made by hand for them and they get to enjoy it and they feel loved all at the same time. The last thing that we're gonna focus on today is when you look at a board, no matter the size of it, we're gonna use something called the triangle method. So the triangle method or the pyramid method is gonna be using odd numbers to build triangles throughout the board. We're gonna do that in color and we're gonna do that in size. Um, what this is gonna do is in, uh, allow our eye, instead of focusing on one color or one item on the board, it's gonna focus on the entire board. It's gonna allow balance to spread across the board. So if we're gonna place cheeses and meats, we're gonna do so in piles of three, starting at the base with two and then one at the top, like a triangle. If you're building a larger board, you're gonna do, let's say five and then seven, and you're just gonna keep building almost like a mountain range all along your board, right? Uh, you're gonna do that with color. Let's say we were using, today we're gonna use apricots. Uh, so they're gonna be kind of like a yellow orange color. We're gonna build a pyramid with those apricots, do three different piles to allow that orange to spread all the way across the board. All right, who's ready to learn how to make a charcuterie board? Feeling it? Oh, not a show of hands. Who's ready to learn how to make a charcuterie board? Yeah. There it is, my goodness. We need some more wine, okay. First off, like I mentioned, meat and cheese is gonna be the most important things that we wanna get on the board. We're gonna start with those today. Uh, I have brought a summer sausage. This is gonna be a bourbon bacon summer sausage. It's absolutely fanta fantastic. Um, you, will, you guys will be able to try some, I hope, later here. Don't worry, I am using my hands uh, with this. You won't eat this board. Um, this is for us to take home, um, so don't worry about anything like that. I always like to keep some paper towel on hand just to wash uh, your hands. So this is gonna be a hard meat that we're gonna put on the board. I'm gonna show you guys how to cut this, but you wanna have a couple different textures of meat on the board, some different styles, and we're gonna style them differently. They're gonna showcase a little differently as well. Um, so with this, this is a Cutco knife, it's a brie, uh, brie cutter. I love it. Uh, if you are familiar with Cutco, it's gonna be a fantastic knife to have in your arsenal there. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut off the ends here, get these taken care of, no one wants those. Hopefully you can see this up there a little bit. And I'll show you the first cut here. So typically we're just gonna go through a hard salami, we're just gonna cut it in a coin. Um, uh, Don and Tom and I were talking about this. Uh, how, how thin do you cut it? I like to give them at least a little bit of substance so they're not having to grab 10 pieces, right? Um, so get, make it a little thick if you want to. Uh, if you want to let it uh, stretch further, you can definitely cut it a little bit thinner. I like to coin it um, just about a quarter inch, half inch right there. We're just gonna go through and we're gonna go ahead and get this all cut up. Now I like to start with this one because I like to get all the cutting out of the way and then we can just style everything later. Now I'm not Martha Stewart, so I didn't have a bunch of stuff cut ahead of time and pull it out of the microwave. <laughs> she, I don't know if she still does that, I have no idea. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and place on our board. You're gonna hear me talk about a river. Uh, you're gonna have a cheese river, you're gonna have a salami river. That just means that we're gonna stagger in kind of like an S curve all the way down. And truly, I, I hope you go, yeah, you can see this a little bit there. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and place on this board I wish I could angle it up, things would fall off though, so I won't be able to do that. But afterwards, you can definitely come up and take a peek at the board and how we've styled it. So you're, we're gonna give a little bit of curve with this salami here, S curve like I said. We're gonna go all the way down the board with it. Now, you might be thinking, well, where's the triangle method? Great question. We only have two meats today, uh, so we're gonna spread that, the red color of the meat in two distinct piles. We're gonna separate that on either side of the board and we're gonna do that triangle method around it. All right, let's put that one there. And we're gonna to jump to one of the cheeses. So these are two of my favorite cheeses. They are shelf stable, don't have to be refrigerated. If you don't have room in your refrigerator, always great to have on hand. Um, we sell them downtown at the grazing table. This is gonna be a smoked cheddar. Um, it's absolutely fantastic with jam. Pairs really, really great with red wines. Um, if, you're, uh, if you've had some red wine already today, that might be a cheese that you really wanna enjoy. This is gonna be a shelf-stable Monterey Jack. Pairs really great with white wines or a sparkling wine. It's gonna have a little spice to it or a little bit of a kick. 
I like to at least provide two distinct, uh, at least three distinct flavors of cheese on a board if I can. Otherwise, you want to at least have two kind of a sweet, savory, uh, and maybe a little bit of a spicy cheese on the board. That's going to allow your guests to have some variety. Um, you don't want to necessarily just get one cheese and they show up and they're like, oh, I don't, I don't like that cheese, right? You want to give them the option to at least have something available for them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and cut these cheeses, and we're going to style them in a couple different ways here. These cheeses come in um, rectangular blocks, so it makes it really great for cutting into rectangular slices. That's gonna pair really great with that hard salami as well. You can just stack, um, just like those Pringle stacks that we all like to get. Maybe just me. Okay, uh, so we got the smoked cheddar here. We'll get the Monterey Jack here in a second. And I'm gonna style one of these in a river as well. We like rivers in our shop. Uh, they add a lot of style to a board. But you're gonna see that we're gonna to start to place these in a couple different patterns and ways, and that's gonna allow the eye, like I said, to spread all the way across the board. Let me get our base of cheeses here. We might even do some down here. Can you guys see that all right on the TV? All right. Great, so in this case, I didn't put the cheese all in one spot. I wanted to get that color kind of a spread across the board there as well. We're gonna cut that Monterey Jack Truly, it's one of my absolute favorites. I like to have a little bit of a spicy cheese on there. At least add maybe even a spicy sausage, just to give some variety like I mentioned. So this is gonna be the only white, uh, super white cheese that we have on the board. So this we're gonna to wanna to spread in that triangle method to make sure that that color is all the way across. Uh, so we're gonna put this in three different spots here. And they don't all truly have to be the same size. If that makes sense. We can go ahead and as long as that color is spread out here. Go ahead and do this spot right here. Okay. Can you guys see what I mean by triangle method there? We built a little pyramid um, and that's going to allow that color to be spread all the way across the board. Now I'll use this one for my show, but uh, like this board, this board is flat as well. If you're like me, you build a charcuterie board, you go to place it down all the things roll, roll off, especially if you added blueberries, olives, things like that. Um, what we're gonna do today to prevent that from happening is we're gonna use dried fruits to border um, certain areas on the board. They're a little sticky, um, so they're gonna kinda create almost a seawall all the way around, and that's gonna allow things to retain and stay on the board. Um, that's a, just a trick that we use in the shop. Um, so that's just something that I wanted us to note before we move on there. But we got the most important things done, right? We have the most important, least important, biggest to smallest. The next large thing that we're gonna add to the board would be any bowls, dishes, plates, anything that you might uh, have that you're hosting with. So let's say, um, let's say you're having chips and salsa, right? You're building a big old spread, you wanted to incorporate chips, salsa, guacamole, whatever it might be. You wanna place those bowls of chips, place those uh, containers of salsa, in their designated spots so you can build around them. Doesn't mean you have to dump the chips in yet, but at least get that bowl in place. Um, today we're gonna use two, uh, or actually three different bowls uh, on our board. First, we're gonna use a truffle honey. Uh, Don and Tom got to try this uh, the other day. Absolutely fell in love with it. Um, it's so, so yummy. Uh, if you've never heard of truffle before, it's gonna be a mushroom variety, um, and they infuse it in the honey. It pairs really great with almost any cheese, any meat. Um, and I, I like to just dip a cracker into it and enjoy it as well. Um, so typically your honey is gonna be in a little container. It might be in a little bowl. Um, at our house we have like a little container that has a lid and like the honey wand that sticks in it. That would be something that we'd wanna get on the board first as well, one of those larger items. So again, we're gonna kind of build a pyramid here even with these items. Next, I always like to have a jam on the board. Honey, jam, and olives is, you'll hear my team say that a lot. Do we have the honey, the jam, and the olives? Those are gonna be the things that come in the bowls. This is gonna be a fig jam. Uh, it's infused with strawberry, so it's gonna be that end of the summer, beginning of fall flavor. Uh, if you've never had a fig jam before, it's absolutely fantastic. This is gonna pair really great with that smoked cheddar. Um, again, we're gonna build that pyramid. So I'm gonna place this one actually right here. And people ask me all the time, well, do you keep things in the container? That is a great question. You'll see that both the honey and the jam are in their containers. The olives, on the other hand, I put in a bowl. The olives don't come in a really nice container, and so I didn't think it looked pretty, so we put it in a bowl today, right? That is your best judgment. If you love the branding on the, on the side of the honey, you love the branding on the jam, keep it. 
it kind of it honestly is a conversation starter. People ask about it. Oh, I've never heard of that brand before. I've never seen that before. Where did you get it? St conversation starter. Olives, also, they, uh, they have juices. And so uh, any crackers, anything else that you put on the board will soak it up. Um, and so I like to keep it in a bowl for that matter as well. I would say if you're gonna put olives in a bowl, just put a little bit of the juice in there, but don't fill it all the way up. You do wanna just keep them uh, moist as possible, but you don't want them, like the, uh, literally it will splash and get everywhere, and no one likes that. So we're gonna build that pyramid, we're gonna finish that up. I'm actually gonna move the cheese here, and that's okay to just kinda of tweak along as we go. Great, so we have now the pyramid, and it's okay if your pyramid's not gonna be perfect. You'll see here there's a triangle, right? And here there's a triangle. It's not gonna be a perfect triangle. We do wanna create some, um, honestly, an organic feel with it. We wanna make it look natural as much as possible. So we have the uh, meat and cheese, most important to least important, and we have our bowls and dishes. Those are gonna be some of those bigger items. From here, we move on to all of our pairings. It's gonna be fruits, it's gonna be uh, maybe veggies in some cases, uh, chips and salsa like I mentioned. Um, it'll also be uh, different dried fruits, chocolates, crackers, nuts. Again, anything that you like. Uh, my rule of thumb, if you don't like it or your guests aren't gonna enjoy it, don't put it on the board. You don't have to put blue cheese on a board just to make it look cool, right? Um, I don't like blue cheese. If you like it, that's awesome. Put it on the board, that's totally okay. Um, but ultimately your board is yours. So put things that pair well, uh, that you enjoy and that you're gonna eat at the end of the night. So we're gonna work largest to smallest um, with our um, fruits next. So we have green grapes here. Grapes come in a lot of different styles and varieties. If you're building, like we have some Halloween boards right now, so we use black grapes. They're really, really spooky. They're really, really cool. When you grab a bunch of grapes, I like to keep them in a bunch of this size. If you wanna go smaller for easy, um, easy, um, uh, plating for guests, uh, that's fine too. I like to have a decent sized clump. It'll look a little bit better on the board. I like to grab it by the vine though. So if I were to just lay this flat, kind of looks like so. Doesn't really look pretty, but if we turn it upside down and grab it by the vine, what we can do is kind of clump it together like so. Now it looks like more of like a grape cluster like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it upside down and we're gonna place it on our board. Now some vines will show and that's okay. We call them uh, grape floaters at the bottom of the bag or the carton. Um, typically you throw them away. We use those to actually fill in any holes so that way you don't see any vine uh, with the grapes. We don't like to see any vine. Again, it speaks to the intentionality of hosting um, and being able to just kind of make some fi uh, final touches, uh, do some things that truly make the board look beautiful, people feel appreciated in that way. It is always great to have scissors on hand if you need to trim any of the grapes. We're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna spread this green color all the way around the board. I'm actually gonna pick those off there. We'll fill that in. Now, as far as pairings go, fruits, things like that, you can use as many or as little as you want. That is <coughs> truly up to you. <coughs> I like to have enough variety that people feel like there's something to choose from. And here you're gonna see, I'm gonna break that pyramid rule to add some green to the middle. All right, can you see on the TV how that green is spread all the way across the board? <clears throat> I grew up with this thing called the tr Christmas tree squint test. Has anyone ever heard of that before when putting up the lights? Okay, one, you're the first person to ever know what that is, cool. Um, we should talk afterward. Um, okay, so when my mom and dad would put up the tree, uh, they would have a squint uh, and after they put the lights on. And you could see where the holes were on the tree with the lights. And they'd say, oh, move that pair of lights you know, up and to the left or whatever it was, uh, was. We like to do the squint test as well. If when you squint, the board looks even and it, all the colors are balanced across the board, you have a good board. Otherwise, you just kind of tweak it and move some color around. So we're gonna keep the grapes like that for so, or for now. <clears throat> We'll come back to that in a second here. We're gonna use these dried fruits next. Again, I said I have apricots today, and I love the contrast, let me see here, between the green and the orange. It's fun to find some contrasting colors. They add a lot of fun to the board. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these around the edge like I had mentioned. Again, this is gonna create a little bit of a border. When you place them on, all you wanna do is just push them down just a little bit. That's gonna allow them just to stick to that board uh, just enough again so things don't roll around. 
But I want us to notice, if you can, on that TV screen there, the difference between uh, the apricots and the smoked cheddar. They're very similar. At least I think you can maybe see that somewhat there. So what we want to do is utilize that and not make sure we're putting too much orange in one spot. That's something that we don't want to do. So we will actually build a pyramid still with that cheddar. Now we have a grouping of five, which is an odd number, which is awesome. So we've still built a pyramid, but we've spread that color with that smoked cheddar. Things are even still across the board. The next thing I want to do is do prosciutto. We didn't do this in the beginning because prosciutto needs a spot to balance. So we need to almost build some spots for it to be wedged in between, whether that's with jars, whether that's with some dried fruits, things like that. Prosciutto is a very delicate meat. Um, typically, I use it for cooking, like wrapping asparagus or Brussels sprouts, honestly, just to make veggies taste better. Um, that's why I use it. Uh, but when you're working with prosciutto, it's usually going to come in strips like this. What you want to do is create a fan, and I'll make one here so you can kind of see. This would be like our fan, okay? Something like this, you just fold in, but what you don't want to do is push together anything on the top. Prosciutto, once, it's, once there's any pressure applied, it's going to stick together and it's just going to look like, a, uh, like a, a smushed pile of meat there. You don't want that. So what we want to do is just put some pressure on the bottom, that will hold it together, and now we have our fan like that. We've got our salami on one side of the board, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the prosciutto, and I've done some fans with these already. I guess that is kinda like Martha Stewart, so. We did, <laughs> we did go ahead and do that. So prosciutto, it is nice, again, when you keep it as a, as a fan, what that's gonna allow is it allows it to look like a big, um, honestly like open, free pile, instead of something that's like, here, I'm just gonna do this for you guys so you guys can see. What you don't want it to look like is that, right? I mean, it happens, like it truly happens. I have a team member uh, that was just recently hired and uh, we walked through how to fold prosciutto. Um, not something that you typically, I guess, get trained on, but in this case you do. So we're just gonna keep going through, putting this on here. All right. So that filled our board nice there. Can you see that on the screen there? Yeah, look at that, it's starting to come together. Um, we really like, again, to fill the board and every crevice that we can on the board, that's gonna speak intentionality to your guests. So all the meat and cheeses are on, all the jams and things are on. Um, one thing I'd like to note is I kept lids on. Reason being is when you're placing things on your board still, things will inevitably fall and you don't uh, wanna pick something out of the honey. It's just nasty and it's disgusting. Um, so pull all the lids off at the top, okay? <laughs> um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place some crackers. This will be the last of the large items that we have. Here at the grazing table, uh, we really like to support small business. And so you'll see a lot of the products here that we have. Um, this is Joslin & Co. Um, the olives are gonna be a small business. This is Rustic Bakery. What we like to do is focus on small business um, and then within that, um, some women-owned, black-owned uh, businesses just to provide as much um, you know, we've been blessed with people supporting our small business. We're going to bless other people with uh, their small businesses. And so, therefore, you'll start to see us use maybe some unique products. What I love to do is when I'm going through the supermarket, try some new items. Uh, it's so easy to grab the things that we're familiar with um, or maybe the generic um, name brand or um, even like the store brand, right? But if you see a cracker that you've never heard of, give it a try. Try it. See if you like it. This is a sourdough crisp. It is so, so good. Um, and so it's worth trying some new items and falling in love with them and you're supporting a small business all at the same time. And um, the other beauty of the crackers like these is they look really cool. So you'll see like the ridge on that, right? So that's gonna add some style to your board as well. You don't get that with a Ritz cracker. That's all I'm saying, all right? <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and again, similar to that pyramid method, we're doing a lot of rivers here and afterward I'd love for you guys to kind of peek at this or even walk up here and you'll see everything's kind of uh, in S formations and that's great. That's gonna add that style to the board. Um, sometimes it can be easier just to put clumps of items and if you don't have a lot of time, go for that. That's totally okay. Um, but what we like to do is add a little bit of style to it. Go ahead and put these in here as well. And we're here for the last pyramid. My goal is for this to make it a little bit easier the next time that you go to a grocery store and you're like tasked with the holiday charcuterie board, 
Um, and you're like, yeah, I got this. I'm a pro at this now, okay? We're gonna try to make this really easy for you guys, for you guys here. All right, so I hope you can see some of this. You'll still see some small holes, right? You're gonna see this right here. See some small holes here, here at the edge. That's totally okay. Finally, the last step that we do is we're gonna garnish and we're gonna utilize small items, things like nuts, blueberries, things like that to fill any crevices. Today, I just have grapes for you. That's gonna be the fresh fruit that we have. But if you're at home, you have a carton of raspberries, uh, you might have like dried cranberries, right? Those are gonna be some smaller items that you can use to fill. Um, this is gonna be the Jocelyn & Co., another woman-owned company that we utilize in the shop. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna fill any of these remaining crevices with nuts. It's okay if it falls off the edge there. Kind of use your hand as a border. If you're serving this in a different room than you're building it, and you don't have an edge on your board, I recommend building it in place. Again, things will fall off. You don't want that to happen there. This is a mixed nut. Um, it is fun to have a couple different varieties. If you don't, that's okay as well. Um, we like to utilize um, even like sometimes chocolate covered almonds or other nuts as well. Um, and those are fun to include. And we'll fill in this right over here. So you should start to see it looking pretty full and that's exactly where we want it to be. All right. Now, we would be missing something if we didn't put a little chocolate on a board. That's my opinion. You should always end with a little bit of chocolate, right? Um, yeah, everyone's heads are nodding up and down like, please, more chocolate. Um, so we utilize Saunders chocolate. You've probably heard of it. They have really great like ice cream caramels and things like that, but they're a Detroit company. Um, we love to place chocolates on top. If you're serving to a multitude of guests, um, I like to say at least one chocolate per person so you're not fighting over it. Um, if we serve it in shop and it's a board for one, you just put one chocolate on there. It's just a palate cleanser at the end. It's a sweet treat, a little bite to enjoy at the very end. I have three of them, which is perfect for building a triangle. So we're gonna build that triangle and I like to just space those out all the way across. Perfect. Now in the summer, you might have a garden and you might have some herbs in the garden. In the winter, this is a little bit complicated, but maybe you have like a little tabletop or countertop garden. Those are always fun. Um, rosemary is one of my favorite garnishes on a board. Typically, if you're uh, building a beautiful platter, you wanna make sure that everything on your board is edible, um, just in case you have one guest who decides to eat like what, everything on the board. Um, you don't wanna go to the ER. Um, I've had a lot of individuals put like mums on boards. Um, they actually can cause you to get really, really sick. Um, and so just kind of be aware of the floral or the things that you're gonna try to incorporate. The last step that we do in our shop is to garnish. Um, and that's gonna just make the, the board just stand out. It's gonna be really beautiful. Um, and it's gonna add, again, that organic, almost like a rustic feel to it. In the summer, uh, we're gonna use things like basil, mint. Uh, we might use um, uh, some floral, chamomile, uh, lavender, different summer, springtime florals. In the winter, we switch more towards rosemary and you can even get some like spruce and pine varieties as well. That's gonna feel very holiday, very festive. So I have rosemary and I have thyme for you guys today, um, which kind of reminds me of Thanksgiving a little bit. I just don't have the sage. Um, but what you wanna do is if you have rosemary, comes in a nice stock, you wanna kinda of break it off into about two inch chunks, just like so. I'll do a couple of these ahead of time here for you guys. And this is gonna allow us to style all the way across the board. So you should have little chunks that look like that. Typically the top of the stock is gonna look the best, the bottom of the stock is gonna have a little, little stock up the middle there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and garnish, and this is gonna fill any remaining crevice that we have. Uh, so I can see here that I have a little bit of a hole, I'm gonna go ahead and place this in. And what I'm placing, I want it to be a V, just like that. Um, if you're gonna put a, a salami rose is something that you might have heard of. It's not something that we incorporated today. Um, but if you put this next to a salami rose, it's gonna make it look like it has two green leaves right on the base of the rose there. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kind of place these in a V all the way across the board. This is truly my favorite part because it really makes it come together. It's here. We're gonna start with the rosemary just because it's the larger of the herbs that we're using. Again, largest to smallest. We keep that mantra out pretty much the entire time. One more here. You can never have too much in my opinion, unless the whole board I guess was rosemary. Too much. 
All right, so the rosemary, that's exactly where I want that. See what I mean about the nuts all falling off there? And then we're gonna garnish with some thyme. So while rosemary looks fun, it's very big and bushy, the thyme is very delicate. So I don't like to use a ton of this, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is in every spot that I put that V, I'm gonna go ahead and put one stalk of thyme in the middle. And that's gonna create some variety inside each of those herb clusters. Gonna give it a little bit of texture in there as well. And it's just gonna look more full and luscious. This would also be that spot if you're using edible floral, you could also put this kind of in the middle of any of those crevices as well. And that would be fine as well. Perfect. All right. And the last step, this is truly my favorite part of the entire process, is to take the picture and show all your friends. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I do, if we have time, I'd love to open up for some Q&A, if possible. Um, oh, are you gonna be able to show everybody? <laughs> oh, awesome. Okay, this is great. Can you all see that? There's that reaction I was hoping for. <laughs> I'm glad you can see it. So, um, can you can you hold it here for a second? Yes, is that I would okay? love yeah. to. Yeah, awesome, okay. Man, that looks great. Okay, so, um, thank you. I want, I would love to show, can you hold it like right over top? And it's okay, um, yeah. yeah, nice, okay. So you can see the orange, right? And this is what I was mentioning about the smoked cheddar. So we still have groupings of five, but none of the oranges touching each other. Um, and you can see that in all of those spots. Otherwise we'd have a massive clump of orange and we didn't want that. The other thing is gonna be that light white cheese and we spread that in three different spots as well. Um, and that way all of that color is not at uh, one spot. Um, the meat is going to be the only thing that touches here, and that's a similar color, but it goes in different directions. And so that way, the color, again, is spread across the entire board. Can you see all the pyramids in there? Um, there's a couple of those evens, like I said, like the, with the green. But if we didn't have green in the middle there, um, that color wouldn't also be spread across the board. So we wanted to create that variety as well. Um, so typically, here we go in. I won't do this now because I, I don't know that we're enjoying this one right now. But you'd go in and you'd open these up, and you'd be ready to serve. Just set your utensils out and you'd be good to go. Um, if we have time, like I said, I'd love to open up to Q&A, if that's okay. I don't know if we have time for that. Yeah, maybe we can take a couple questions if you have any questions about hosting your charcuterie boards. Um, otherwise, we can get the board set out and you guys can enjoy it and mingle through all that stuff. But um, yeah, I'd love to answer. Or you can take pictures too. That works too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you have your jam thumb and your honey? Yes. Yes. Great question. Depending on how many you're hosting with. So if, um, if it was just gonna be like my family, I typically would just say everyone dip and have fun and you know do all that. Um, if you're hosting with, um, you know maybe it's a game night, there's friends all you know from all over. Um, go ahead and just have one utensil per um, jam or jelly or honey. Um, otherwise, one pair of tongs would be fine or two pairs of tongs. Um, the olives and everything, this should all be fine with tongs. I would just have a little, we use honey wands, if you've ever seen a little honey wand. Yeah. Um, I would just do one honey wand and then one knife to spread the jam and you'd be fine. So you'd only need about two, two specific utensils in this case. So you put them next to the board or actually on? I would set it, yeah, truly right next to it, right on it. Yeah, yeah, or open it up and you can put it in. That would be another option as well. Yeah. Any other questions? When the grapes are on a bunch, Persons are going to grab the whole bunch. Yeah, so I mentioned that um, I like the bunches in larger sizes. Otherwise, you can easily do a, a bunch like our mandatory in shop is three. three. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, I'd rather have like six grapes and so I, and it just holds a little bit better. Um, but that's truly up to you at that point. Yeah. Yes, sir. How long will that sit? Great question. This can sit out for four hours. Um, so typically that should be fine to cover most events. Um, food safety is gonna uh, have it out for four hours. Um, if you're like me and my family members, it can sit out all day. Um, <laughs> I don't usually recommend that. Um, food safety again will say four hours. Um, most people will also ask, you know, when should I serve it or should I refrigerate it up until serving it? Most meat and cheese is best uh, served at room temperature. Now, we, everything we incorporated on this, other than the grapes, was shelf stable. So it was all at room temperature already. But if you're pulling cheese and meat out of the fridge, 
Um, by the time you're done making your board, it'll be about 45 minutes to an hour, and that'll be perfect temperature for serving. That's about room temp right there. And then you'll have about three to four hours to serve it as well. All right. Awesome, and I think uh, Don uh, and Tom have a very special announcement for you guys as well. And um, so I'm gonna pass it off to them. I'm gonna stick around to answer any questions for you guys, so feel free to come on up. Thank you.